We're joined by our guest in the studio today. He is a, a, a leader and um, an awards recipient, lead several leadership award recipients. He's an author as well, the author of Sit Down, Sit Up, and his name is Toby Akinyemi. It's a delight to have you today. Hi, Olivia. Hi, how I'm are okay. You? I'm good. How are you? You look fabulous, by the way. Oh, thank you so much. You're too kind. I do try. <laughs> All right, Toby, uh, I know you have a remarkable story. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll go straight into the story in a moment. Mm -hmm. But what made you decide that you were going to share your story? Lots of people, we're starting to see people coming out, but people hesitate to share their stories mm -hmm. and share sides of them that make them somewhat vulnerable mm -hmm. because they're afraid of people clapping back, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and it's coming back to bite them in the bum sometime yeah, in the future. Yeah. So did you ever understand those fears? Why did you decide to share yours? So um, obviously what you said is really true. Like when you share your stories, people are quick to clap back. But I feel like the strength is vulnerability. You need to be vulnerable. People need to be able to relate to you. You need to let people know that we're all on this journey together. Um, we see the gram, the gram's exciting, the gram's colorful, but behind the gram, there's so much that happens. One thing I say a lot is, when you take a picture, there was a before and there's an after. We don't see the before and after, we only see that picture. So if people can actually see that there was a before, all the struggle, try to get your stomach in the right position, <laughs> all the tummy tucking and all that stuff, if people saw that, then people will be able to relate to you that, yo, and if people can relate to you, I feel like there'll be less so-called worries or stress um, that people go through, because people will know that, yeah, I'm not, I'm not in this by myself, I have sure. other people going through the same thing. So it's just being relatable to people, letting people know that, yo, you're not by yourself. We all go through things, even the so-called happy people of the world, if that's what you're not going to call myself, the happy man now. But yeah. Very interesting. But since you decided to share this side of you and become vulnerable, mm -hmm. have you gotten any um, negative criticism? So none so far. It's so funny because as soon as I finished, um, when people started buying, I said, you know what? Just summarize the book in three words. And what I've been getting is inspiring, obviously the word vulnerable, relatable, entertaining. So I haven't had no clapbacks yet. But I remember before I released this, someone said to him, someone said, be careful of everything you said. And I spoke about everything. And then I spoke about, even I read it back and I was thinking, whoa, 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 whoa. I even thought, you know, there was some, from some naughty days that we've misbehaved, could there be like legal repercussions for stuff? I had to speak to people and people were like, listen, and someone said to me, they could be, and I was like, listen, where I am now, let me say it, because I believe in all days of one, one person reads the book and their life changes. Okay, now before we get into the point mm -hmm. where you have discovered yourself and mm -hmm. you're a happy man mm -hmm. and you've written a book, mm -hmm. let's talk about that broken man. Mm -hmm. What were the incidences that led to your story? Okay, so I, would, I was a mess. And when I say a mess, I am a mess. I got involved in everything and anything you can think of. That's what I would say. I was, um, I was just all over the place. And it's obviously me not having my values in the right place. Things like fame, money, power were literally what I defined my life by. So I would do anything to have these things. And when I say anything, I don't mean anything illegal. Let me just make that clear. It was more or less that I would step on people's toes. I didn't mind just stepping on someone's head to get to the top. Literally, that's what it was for me. But um, you, you amass all of this stuff. I was running um, a student event in the UK called Barfest, 3,000 students every time, three times a year. It was good money. So um, I'd amass all this stuff. I came to Nigeria. <clears throat> I, was, I was doing okay, what people would call it okay. I was doing okay. Toby was goals for people. People were like, yo, I want to be like you, this, that, 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 that. But there's an awakening. And that awakening is, I feel like we all know, we all experience it. We know what's wrong from what's right. But it takes a lot to you, for you to be responsive to your awakening. And my awakening came from me speaking to my mom. Um, my mom was like, listen, you might be doing okay for yourself, all that stuff. That's your business. I couldn't care. But if you think you can go through life, living life recklessly the way you're living it, and not keying into your faith, then you're basically a joke. So we had a conversation, which I spoke about in the book. There's so much that we spoke about. Um, we had a conversation, and literally that kicked something. But I had to be responsive. If you ask me what made me responsive, maybe because the business wasn't going too well, maybe I started losing money, maybe. I'm just saying maybe now because it's all in hindsight, right? But I had just thought, you know what, let's try this thing out for six months. I see what happens for six months. Let me try and fix my value. Let me fix my thinking. Let me fix my mind. Let me sort myself out and um, see what happens after it. Six months now. Six months then, now it's been two years. 
brilliant proud of you Thank now let's you. talk about what messed up your values in the first place what displaced your values in the first place would you say that it was a fun function of pet pressure would you say that it was you know some parental neglect from where you stand given the benefit of hindsight now what so would I you feel say that, i feel like my parents did an amazing well they're still doing an amazing job my parents are so amazing because my parents are one of those three people that sit down with you they speak to you dad and mom same thing but regardless of how regardless of how strong you might think you are your environment does take a toll on you um we're quick to say uh oh, no i'm stronger than my environment and something like that regardless I have a mind of the, of my own. yeah i'm a strong person is that regardless it takes a lot for you to actually be able to even peer pressure i feel like environment is more because at times your environment has your environment your peer pressure of people around you doing things around you which they might have like direct impact on you but i feel like when it comes to things like environment it doesn't have to have direct but indirect impact you can be walking on the street and you see a guy drive um a car that you feel like yo I want that car, but you don't know how he's gotten it. So that puts you put yourself under a pressure. Um, you see everyone doing something. You feel like this is the norm. It's now the norm. I might as well get involved in it. So my environment definitely defined who I was at that point. And um, again, like I said, it had to be the discussion I had that changed everything. But environment was the main thing that messed up. Because um, growing up again, okay, I was born in Nigeria, but we moved to the UK. My parents sent us to the UK. And growing up, all I saw around was drugs, guys making fast money, people just living life recklessly, not caring, so to say. So obviously that defined me, that was what I saw every time. I thought, okay, if he can do it, why not? Let me, let me do what I have to do. So unfortunately, I didn't go down the drugs route, but I still um, had friends that were doing all that stuff. And um, I got involved in one way or the other, but not actually selling drugs or dealing drugs or doing drugs myself. But my environment, definitely, definitely, definitely. 90% of my mess. I would blame on the environment. Now, how were you able to get your mind out of a path? Because I want to believe that at some point you got really sad. Did you ever at any point get depressed? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> okay. Whoa. I've had two, two of those in the past. So prior to 26, 2017, I had two between 2015 and 2017, and they were serious crises. Brilliant. Now, I'm asking this because we're encouraging a lot of mental health awareness mm -hmm. we know that from 13th up until the 16th or 19th of mm -hmm. this month mm -hmm. is like the mental, mental health, health awareness yeah. week everybody's speaking a lot yeah. about mm -hmm. mental health mm -hmm. so at that point when you were depressed mm -hmm. what were some of the things that you wish you knew then that you know now okay so the first incident i didn't know anything was literally depression is crazy like it's like clouds like it you just you wake up and okay maybe because i didn't really speak about my background me being an entertainer well, I have an entertainment background, being a promoter, I spoke about promoting a student event and all that stuff. So it's a thing of where I only looked forward to the weekend because that's the time I could go out and just be happy. And once Monday comes back in, I'm back in my shell, so to say. So depression at the first incident was really, really, really bad. I was losing money as well, so things went crazy. Um, the second incident was better because at that point I understood where men to seek help, where men to speak to people, where men to have the right people around you that would help you, where men to be... I wouldn't say I was vulnerable then, but just to actually voice that you need something help. is happening, I need help here. And um, again, my faith had already come into the picture at that time. So I knew that, you know what, as much as I'm praying about stuff, I'm also putting practical steps in place. So people are saying to me, do this, speak to this person, speak to that person, speak to that person. So the first time it was for a very, very long time. But the second time, I think within like a month, I was back to myself, I was back on my feet. And me speaking to people made me realize, again, which is why I'm, I don't mind being vulnerable, again made me realize that, yo, it's not just you. People go through these things. You need to speak, you need to seek help. You just need to voice it and let people know that this is what's happening. Because you'd be surprised the number of people that are dying from these things. It's crazy, crazy. I can't, remember, I can't remember, I can't remember what, I was reading something not too long ago, I can't remember what the exact figures are. And I'm like, whoa. And especially with, with the world disease, people committing suicide. There's just, and everything's off the back of depression. So yeah, mental health awareness is key, which again made me start something in my community for men. Because obviously as men, we're meant to be strong. We're, meant to, we're not meant to be vulnerable. There's so much expectations. These are some of the lines that society tells yeah, us. Yeah, well, there's so much expectations for men. And the funny thing is these expectations are actually put there by human beings like you. 
you are the per he's the person that's saying that this is HTTP this with that. You put yourself under pressure that you don't need to do to put yourself under. So I started something called Coles, and it's just a community of young men coming together, being vulnerable, speaking about everything that we're all going through, and just being there for each other and um, having each other's back. So yeah, mental health, please, guys, if you're going through any sort of depression, anything, please speak, speak, speak. Please, right. please, 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 please speak. Please speak up. As I'm, I'm really glad that you said that because I was even going to ask you about how the society limits men from speaking up. But thank you for speaking about that. You are the happy man. You're now referred to as the happy man and you're spreading that joy to other people. So if there are people that who want to be, who want to be a part of your community, men mm -hmm. who want to be a part of your mm -hmm. community, how can they get to be a part of your so community? So we, um, the community is called COALS and it's C-O-A-L-S. We currently, well, we are, we're speaking to someone in Nigeria now that we, we will have an extension in Nigeria, but currently we are live in the UK. We meet twice a month, so every two weeks. Um, on my page, I always put it up. I don't know if the page is up somewhere, but yeah, we'll have meetings and you can always DM me, reach out to me. I'm more than available to help anyone. I'm more than available, trust me. All right, and your book, um, Sit Down, Sit Up, what's your book about? Is it about your story as so well? So it's about my story, my personal development. Um, it's faith-based. Um, self-development, I spoke about managing that transition because like I said, I was a vest to what I am now. I'm not, say, I'm not saying I am fully there. I am not fully there yet. I'm still but working That's okay. You're allowed to be a, yeah. goals, a masterpiece and a work in progress. This is, I'm a work in progress, but it's just to show people how I manage my transition. And um, yeah, that's literally what the book is about. A lot of people are asking me, how have you managed? Because people that knew me before and people that knew me after, how have you managed to be two different people in the space of two years, so to say? I was like, you know what? Let's put in a book. Interesting. We've been speaking with Toby Akinyemi, who has given us an insight into his life and how his life has dramatically changed in the past two years. From being a mess, he now has <laughs> a message, and he's sharing Whoa. it in his book, Sit Down, Sit Up. So f please feel free to reach out to him on Instagram. How can people follow you on social media? So, yeah, my Instagram page is toby.imj. So it's T-O-B-I dot... IMJ. Yes, T-O-B-I dot IMJ. If you need someone to talk to, you need a shoulder to lean on, and you need a community of other men who are not afraid to show their emotion, to cry if they need to cry, <laughs> and to just be vulnerable with their feelings. Please, Please feel cry. free to connect and, you know, work with this community. And also, if you're a woman and you want to speak with other women who are, you know, sharing a lot of information about mental health, because it's Mental Health Awareness Week, please follow at She Writes Woman on Instagram, and you've received support in many ways than you know. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.